must have remembered that I asked him about some questions. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Can you hear us? Okay. You can just shake it. Uh, you're on mute, but I'll remind you before you give your report. Okay. We'll wait for Mr. Smith. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the uh, first item of the day is the board minute approval. This is this is Amy. I move to approve the May board minutes. This is a full second. All right. Any other questions or further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right. Motion carries. Next up, we have our support group updates, uh, starting with the PTO. So we have Miss Kim Shields, who is our new high school PTO president. So just need to take yourself off mute and you're ready to roll, Kim. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, well, the PTO is very excited. We are shifting uh, to our summer priorities this week. And uh, the top three initiatives that we're focusing on these next few weeks are our parent ambassador program, formally referred to as the Buddy Family Program. Um, we have already closed uh, signups for this. Um, we have a lot of families interested and the main purpose is the same as what the Buddy Family uh, program was for. Uh, just you know, having these families represent LNC and connecting with new families as the main focus. Um, combined with that, we're also in the works of planning a summer event, um, which would be a joint event across all three campuses. Um, and we will tie in this parent ambassador program, attract um, hopefully a lot of our new families and existing families to come to this event to mix and mingle and hopefully have a good time. Um, and lastly, we are working on um, meeting to review and approve uh, the grants that have been um, submitted to us by all three campus, um, you know, all the teachers on all three campuses. So we're excited to finish reviewing the requests that have been made, and we want to quickly get back to those teachers to let them know, um, you know, if and when they can move ahead with um, whatever it is that they are looking to do. Um, and that's really all I have right now. Um, but we're very excited and um, we're looking to um, really looking forward to having a really fun event. If any of you would like to join us, we would love that. All right. Thank you, Ms. Shields. And welcome, by the way. Um, thank you thank for you. providing the update and look forward to some of the great things that uh, you and the rest of the PTO will do in the coming uh, months, weeks, years. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up we have our athletic boosters update. Mr. Schlegel. Good evening, hope everyone's doing well. We've had an exciting month um, in the sport world. So we, uh, we had two of our track athletes uh, get state medals. And um, that would be Blaze and Lily. And then we had Miles for the first time. We had a field event place. He came in eighth, which is awesome because we've never had a field event athlete place in the state meet. Um, our tennis team came in. Um, they went to the final eight, lost in the final eight to a very strong Hickory team. Our men's across brought home their first state championship two weeks ago. 
And then we have women's soccer who will be heading to the state championship Saturday morning up in Cary. So it has been very exciting. And on top of that, we have broken ground on the field house. And I don't know if we'll talk about that later, but that is very exciting for the athletic program as well. So um, things are starting to, to slow down a little bit finally, um, but we're amping up for the fall season. So we've just gotten up um, the fall trial information on our website. We've opened family ID and trials will start August 1st for high school. And it will start, I believe, August 15th for most of our middle school teams. So that's where we're at. All right. Thank you, Mr. Schlegel. And uh, good luck to the Lady Knights so on Saturday morning. All right, next up, we have our school and state update, Ms. Stein. Thank you. Um, so as Mr. Schlegel alluded to, the end of the year is always really fun. And this one was probably particularly enjoyable just because it um, we continued to get back into a more normal rhythm. So after two years, um, some of the events and different things that had um, we hadn't been able to do or we hadn't been able to do to the full capacity we were. And um, from seeing kids really enjoying field day to the kindergarten, kindergarten, fourth grade, eighth grade, moving on up ceremonies. They were all wonderful. Um, I mentioned earlier to the board, but I think for the public, it's good to know that the fourth grade class that um, was moving on up is our class that um, started with us as kindergartners. So that that is super exciting. So we're excited to get the class of 2030 over. And then um, a huge shout out to, and not just because she's in the room, um, Melissa Skyer and Christine Casillas and Mr. Smith who um, not only did exceptionally good planning again this year, but also got to be um, weather prognosticators and made the absolute right call when it came to that. So I've asked Mr. Smith just to talk a little bit about senior class, the transition and graduation because it was pretty darn awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Stein. Good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, the, you know, I, I want to open with just the folks at Atrium Health Ballpark and within the Kannapolis Cannonballers organization. Uh, were, were nothing short of incredible. And the correspondence that we had at the beginning of the week last week, I mean, they shared the same sentiment with us and they stated, we want to do everything in our power to have the event as scheduled Friday night, May 27th. And even if you think back a couple of days ago, that parental downpour that we even had that morning, um, we were still, because of their hard work and all the teamwork and collaboration, we were able to still have our ceremony go is exactly as it would have been if, if there was no rain at all. And if you know anything about baseball, um, especially minor league baseball, you know, that field is like their baby. And the fact that we were able to even still have the same procession coming down third baseline to get their diploma and shake my hand, shake everybody's hand and then go up first baseline um, was nothing short of incredible. And the atmosphere, the environment, it was a celebration of our class of 2020, which it should have been, but it was just a fun night. And um, I can speak on behalf of a handful of other folks that we've received so much positive feedback, not just from folks within LNC, but folks that are extended family that may have been traveling from other places that, you know, this may have been their only interaction with Lincoln Charter, or, you know, they may have been coming to see one of many graduations during graduation season. Um, just, you know, the, the way the format of it, the personalization, the intimacy, and yet the celebration, the the length of it. I mean, it's just all been positive. So I know um, Mrs. Skyer can hear me just to echo what Mrs. Stein said, her and Christine Casillas, the many, many, many staff members that had some element of involvement with rehearsal, with the, uh, with the ceremony itself, and then even afterward with handing out diplomas and things like that. So um, it was a true celebration. We had a lot of staff that were able to enjoy that as mom or dad. Um, and I'm glad that they were able to take that opportunity. Um, it was in addition to the attendance there and the live stream, it was the largest attendance graduation that we have ever had in Lincoln Charter's history. In addition, um, I can't see, so I don't know if Ms. Benford is there. Um, it was the first live rendition of the national anthem that opened it up by Ms. Benford's daughter, Morgan Benford, who absolutely set the tone with an incredible performance. So um, 182 graduates walked across that stage, shook my, shook my hand, and are now considered LNC alumni. So unless there's any other questions, I, I think that gives a high level update of how fun last Friday was.
Thank you, Mr. Smith. And one other thing I'll say about that is um, a lot of our staff members, not just high school staff, first of all, kudos to the high school staff, because it does take many hands to, to make that all work and, and line kids up and organize them and do all the things that need to happen. But many staff attend um, from elementary through all the way high school. And at the end of the ceremony, they stand on the way out so that the kids we used to do it on the way in and now we've kind of done it on the way out, which was super cool. And just to see the, the kids hugging some of their past teachers and things was, and administrators were very cool. So it was a, it was a neat tradition. Oh yeah. And Dr. Kendrick was the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. The three R's. Yeah. I just like to chime in on what you just said, um, Ms. Stein, which is that was incredible to see just the kids coming off of the field, a, a line on both sides. Like imagine a walkway, teachers line up on both sides, kids are coming off, hugging, crying, like hugging teachers, middle school teachers, high school teachers, I mean, you name it. Like just if you just take a step back and think about the impact that those folks had on those kids' lives phenomenal to see you experience yeah well if i were yeah it's not a surprise <laughs> anymore <laughs> we wish it was a, it's still cool it's super cool so um so anyway congratulations mr smith and to your whole staff and the the class of 2022 it was it was really a great night um a couple other just small things. Wanted to confirm that we um, just finalized an agreement with Novant Health to again um, partner with them to have a certified mental health professional on staff with us again. Um, Dr. Danielle Graham will remain in that capacity and um, just love the partnership with Novant. They are so sincere in wanting to actually be in partnership and offering to do things um, that they know are in the best interest of kids. So that is that has been a really great working relationship. Um, we are moving towards second interviews for um, the middle school principal search. It, these are very big shoes that Dr. Graham has left. And, um, but I, I am very excited to say that we had a very strong pool of candidates. Um, and Ms. Holland, Mr. Mavity, and um, I believe nine other teachers, parents, um, and folks helped to, to do the first round of interviews. We've narrowed it down to our top two. And um, I hope to have that buttoned up here in the next week and a half. So um, more, more to come on that. And then um, I just want to, again, share, I'm sure you guys saw it in the board notes. Um, there is a bill that's moving through the uh, legislature right now called the Parent Bill of Rights. Um, it um, I am, I, I'm just gonna come right out. I'm not in support in any way of the way that it is currently written. Um, it is um, meant to be divisive. I think it's meant to be political. It will probably not pass. It'll probably, well, it'll pass the legislature. It'll probably be vetoed. Um, and unfortunately, you know, obviously we have a strong tradition of partnering with our parents and that bill does not it encourage partnerships and encourages an adversarial relationship. So I just, when those kinds of things come through, I want you guys to be aware um, and make sure that you are um, able to see what it is that they're doing and certainly happy to talk to anybody um, as to some of the background and how we could be more constructive. But, um, you know, I would certainly, again, encourage our parents and anybody to reach out to teachers. It's, it's really, truly a partnership and they're happy to do that, but it's, it's unfortunate to see that. So um, just to kind of get that on your guys' radar. And that's all I have. Sadly, I think the Senate passed that today. And, um, yeah. All right, enough said about that. Um, thank you, Ms. Stein, for your updates. All right, next up, we have our finance update. So we'll start with the budget amendments. Is that you, Ms. Wilson? It is. Second. Yep, just waiting for Sharon to share. Alrighty, board. So I'm coming to you then tonight to seek votes on two things. Um, the first one will be budget amendment number five. This will be the last budget amendment for the 21-22 fiscal year. So Shannon, if you want to go to the next slide. 
Um, pretty much this is just a quick little shore up, close out. Um, there's a few new things. Um, we added in the Boots, Bowls and Barbecue revenue and expenditures. Um, Sarah did a really good job with that event. Um, is she here? I don't think she's here. I wanna say she may have netted about 20,000, a little over that. So um, kudos to her and thank you all for your part in that too. Um, and then there's the other side of the revenue that's coming in. Um, we received a grant from the um, DHHS for uh, the elementary school contracted nurse, Nurse Denise. And the nice thing is um, we weren't able to use all of that funding um, and they are gonna roll that grant over to next year. So we at least have her funded um, for most of next year also. Um, the correlating expenditures, obviously for Boots, Bowls and Barbecue, and for the nurse, um, we are also gonna purchase some staff shirts for our 25th year celebration coming up next year. Um, we've got some summer construction projects. I spoke about that in the last budget amendment, but we have some final numbers. Um, we're gonna do some improvements at the high school um, and in our community room over at the middle school. And then uh, we had some bus repairs that needed to be done. So um, you'll see the, it's taking about 40,000 down from, from, uh, from the net surplus, um, nothing major, but just needed you guys to vote so we could close this year out. Any questions? Move that we approve budget amendment number five as presented. This is Nicole. <laughs> this is Amy, I'll second. Okay. Any other questions or further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right, next up, I think we're back with Miss Wilson. Back to me again. All right, and I think Shannon gave you guys this in your board packet, so I'm not going to read every slide. Um, you guys can go back through. Um, just a quick funding overview. So when the state legislator and the governor signed the budget, it was a biannual budget, so it was for two years. But what they can go in during short session is go in and make changes. So that's currently what's going on, but nothing has been voted on yet. So we have continued our conservative approach into budgeting using a one to 2% increase in state revenue. Um, we have seen the Mecklenburg County proposed budget they um, increased the CMS budget by almost $20 million. That was half of what CMS requested. Um, but based on that, we should see about a 2% increase in our per pupil allotment from Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. Um, we are still working on spending our ESSA funding. Um, if you'll recall, we received um, two big rounds. The first one was 180 per student um, as of May 31st, we had spent about 122,000 of the 400,000 that we received. And all of those funds will have to be spent by September 30th of 2023. And in um, Dr. Graham's new role, she's gonna make sure that I get that done. <laughs> and then um, in the second round of ESSA funding, we got $400 per pupil, which was almost 900,000 of which we've spent about 100,000. Um, but those will have to be spent by September 30th of 2024. We, you will not see those in the budget that's being presented. I will come and do the rollover in the first budget amendment. So it's, it's just going to be a net neutral for the revenue. There'll be correlating expenditures, but until we know what we're rolling over, I didn't put it in the budget that's being presented today. Next slide. Here's just some historical data on state. And um, as you guys know, over 87% of our students come from CMS. So I've put CMS funding. Um, the big jump for CMS was based purely on they overestimated their student population. So when they had to go back and do actuals, we received more funding than we initially thought because um, obviously their denominator was wrong. So there we go, next slide. So here are my budget assumptions. Um, we did a 1.5% increase for state revenue, 2% for um, local CMS. Um, our Knights Fund revenue does include the projections for the Elevate campaign contributions. And um, as I previously mentioned, the federal COVID relief funds will be added by a budget amendment um, once we 
roll over those numbers from this year. On the expenditure side, um, we've ish we've built in the step salary increases for all staff and a 1% increase for all non-teaching staff, which will be awarded in December 22. As historically we've done, we always like for the budget to come in first so that if we need to make any adjustments, we can. Um, we're gonna keep a close eye and see what comes out of short session. And obviously if there's anything that needs to be pushed down to the teachers, we'll be sure that we, we are in compliance with that. So um, state retirement is still continuing to increase at an alarming rate. So it's a 5.7% increase over last year, health 5.4. We've added the director of academics position. Um, we saw some increases in our custodial services and ground services of around 5%. And then there's 1.4 million in capital expenditures um, for our normal tech refresh, CapEx, the town of Huntersville baseball part, base build field partnership, and then the field house. So with all of that said, <laughs> Um, here is a quick summary of our budget. Um, we're looking at about 22.2 million in um, revenue and 23.5 million in expenditures. And this will be the first time while well, Haley's been to LSC that I am presenting a deficit budget. But if Shannon will go to the next slide, if you pull out the um, Elevate campaign contributions and the Elevate project cost, you will see that we are actually going to be at a net surplus of $481,000. So the reason for the deficit is that the school is having to front the um, cost of the field house until those campaign contributions come in. So um, just didn't want you guys to be too alarmed there. Um, again, I'm not gonna go over this, but 62% of our revenue is from state, about 31% is from local. And on the expenditure side, um, about 70% of our expenditures are for salary and benefits. And then the next highest one is 11% for rent and debt service. And I just wanna call out um, for our board members, that 11%, local LEAs don't consume that. They're able to issue debt to build their buildings. So that is something that as a charter school, we have to build into our annual budget. So just wanted to highlight that again. Um, Next slide, Shannon, sorry. On here, you guys will see, I always take the um, amended budget for the year and um, analyze it against the proposed. It's kind of all over the place because um, this year has been weird. We've had uh, a ton of bonuses that have come in from the state that we don't know if it's gonna happen next year. Um, we did, we finalized Rise Together, COVID funding. Um, so when I put this together, I was like, ah, this is kind of all over the place. But if you guys want um, any additional detail, there's some explanations to the side that kind of hit it at high level. So for fund balance, um, we ended last year with a uh, fund balance of about 10.5 million. We're projected to end this year of a fund balance of about 11.5. So even with that um, deficit, we're still at an $11.2 million fund balance. So still a very sizable, healthy fund balance and about 22, 221 days cash on hand. And then finally, um, as part of our debt covenants, we have to meet um, a debt service coverage ratio of 1.1 if we have 75 days cash on hand, which we do. And you'll see the budget right now, we're looking at about 1.45. So we will cover that um, covenant too. And that is the 22-23 budget. Any questions? Hey Haley, just a, a quick question on the fund balance roll forward. Yeah. Just wanna be clear, is that net of the investments or does that include the investments? That includes the investment. Okay. All right. Any questions on, well, actually, any other questions or any questions on the budget? Any are, motion? There, are there any motions out there? Yeah, I move that we approve the budget for the 2022-2023 school year. This is my boy, second. Okay. All right. Any other questions, further discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson.
All right, next up, we have some new business um, coming into play. So first item is the board term extensions slash leadership. Um, let's see, are you leading off with that or am I leading off with that? I'll take the first one. We All have right. two board membership recommendations up for a vote tonight. The first is both Jared Tilley and Ridgely Chapman have completed their first full terms as board members. And um, I'm happy to share that they're being recommended for a second term. And so we'll be asking for a vote on that tonight. You made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is Amy. I move to um, approve Jared and Ridgely for a second three-year term. And this is Elizabeth, I'll second. All right, thank you, ladies. Any other questions or further discussion? Anybody want to interview them? Make sure they're worthy? No? They didn't run. That's good. All right. That's step one, right? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, motion carries. Congratulations. All right, so next up, we have the uh, board leadership. So, um, as I'm sure all of you are aware, this will be uh, my last board meeting. So um, in replacement of me, um, basically we are uh, stair-stepping. So the, the nomination would be for Leslie to assume the uh, chair role and for Amy to assume the vice chair role. Um, I don't think they need any introduction. Um, so we could probably just move forward with a motion. I move that we approve Leslie in the board chair role and Amy in the vice chair. This is Michael. This, this is, is Ridgely, I'll second. Okay. Any other questions or further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right. Congratulations, ladies. All right. Next on the agenda is the elementary school land acquisition. Do we have a motion out there? This is something for uh, that was discussed in a closed session earlier pursuant to uh, section 143.318.11A5. Yeah, I move that we <clears throat> authorize the board chair to execute a land purchase contract up to uh, $2 million. This is Elizabeth, I'll second. Okay, any other questions or further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Thank you, motion carries. All right, Mr. Kilpatrick, some policy updates. Thanks, Rick, and Shannon and I will, will tag team on this. I'll start with Title IX and uh, Shannon can handle the uh, Orlando Student Handbook update. Uh, we talked a bit about Title IX last board meeting. Uh, again, it's a federal law that prohibits uh, discrimination based on sex and gender. And um, the real impact is with respect to sexual harassment. Um, every administration, every presidential administration has the ability to update the rules when it comes to Title IX and, and the Biden administration uh, did that in 2020. Uh, that's required us to make uh, some changes to our Title IX policy. For the most part, it's, it's, it's requiring us to put a process in place when it comes to uh, claims that a student makes uh, for violation of Title IX. So uh, it's a, I think you have a copy of the, the policy in your board packet. It's a 16 page policy that kind of outlines um, like I said, the process, we have to uh, appoint uh, a Title IX coordinator, which is uh, Dr. Graham. We have Title IX investigators who will actually do the fact finding, and those are going to be the, the building principals and assistant principals. And then we have a uh, decision maker, uh, which will be uh, Superintendent Scott. Um, so um, I don't know if anybody has any, any questions about the policy generally, but um, Again, we, we worked with an attorney who specializes in this to put it together and uh, believe it complies with the new regulations. So if no questions, I'd uh, seek an, a motion to approve the policy. 
Ms. Chen, I'll motion to approve the Title IX policy. This is Leslie, I second. Any other questions, further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kilpatrick. So um, I, as Greg said, I'll, I'll tackle um, some of the stuff in the student handbook. We treat this as policy. It comes back to the board every year for approval because we do make some changes. So at a high level, um, some of the, the bigger changes, um, we have been required uh, by the um, state to include a dispute resolution process for our McKinney Vento students. For those of you who are unaware, McKinney Vento students are those who are economically disadvantaged and are homeless. And so we provide support to those students so that they can successfully um, attend school and have what they need to, to do that here. Um, and a family can apply for this designation. And if they were to be denied, there has to be a dispute resolution for that. So um, that, that has been included in the handbook so uh, if a family needed to um, know what's available to them and how to apply for that, and if there were concerns about being um, not um, provided those services, what to do with that. Um, another thing is we made a slight change to the student behavioral code um, where we included some of the Title IX language as well as um, expanding weapons to include weapons um, facsimiles because um, there have been quite a bit of um, things in social media where people are using airsoft guns and different other guns that that could cause disruption to the school environment. So that's been added. Um, the Title IX policy um, link and the coordinator's name and the basic process, not all 17 or 18 pages, has been in, um, also included for reference for our families and students. And then there are some wording changes um, and additions to each of the building supplement areas that um, come up throughout the year just for clarification so that um, families clearly can refer to that and know what, what to expect or where to get support or um, anything that has to do specifically with the building. So those are, are some of the brief changes. The entire student handbook with the edits is in the shared drive, which I know the board has already looked at, but at a high level, those are the, the big changes that we're recommending to um, be included so it can be posted for our families. Thank you, Ms. Stein. Great. Motion up. Oh, I, I motion that we approve the amendments to the um, student handbook. This is Amy, I'll second. Okay, thank you, ladies. Uh, any questions, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. I think we have one final motion left. <laughs> Actually, so fast. not so fast. <laughs> <Mr>. Chairman. <laughs> Um, you know what, let me start and then you we'll, start. Yeah, yeah. thank All you. Right, All right, I feel like I need to stand up for this. So Rick, why don't you stand with me? And Shannon strategically placed some Kleenex in between us. I'm not sure if that's for you or for me, but um, <laughs> thank you, Rick. Uh, it has been um, a big commitment over the last six years. And, and thank you to your family, who's also on Zoom tonight watching. I don't know if you noticed that one. <laughs> Um, for their support and allowing you to be here. Um, and thank you in particular for the last two years. Uh, your leadership has been incredible during a very challenging time. And um, can't, can't thank you enough for your steadfastness for uh, steering this ship through choppy waters as one of our other members described um, and doing it with grace and thoughtfulness and a sense of humor. And um, you've been a wonderful mentor to me personally. You leave some really big shoes to fill and you will be missed. And so I have a plaque for you and a gift card. And um, you, can, you can read this later, but the board has some thoughts they wanted to share with you. Um, and, and thank you for your leadership and your partnership as you've served on this board. And so um, 
you've really made an incredible impact to the school and to all of us personally on the board. So we wanted to do something a little extra special for you. And, and we have some creative minds on the board. So. Okay. Okay. Let's pause for the photo off. Okay. You know, he puts it in his pocket. He's like, I did wear heels. I needed a few more inches here. <laughs> no, don't sit. Don't sit. Okay. All right. Hey, Look at me. Thanks, man. Okay. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over to Mrs. Johnson, who's put together a fun tribute for Rick. Brace yourself. Okay. All right, I gotta get the mic closer to me. All right, so Rick, I, I have a script here because it's very specific what I'm going to say. You've dedicated six years to this board and this school, and we are so grateful for your time and your commitment and your leadership. So in honor of the six years, we want to take a minute to acknowledge six, just six of the many board accomplishments during your tenure that are a direct result of your involvement and leadership. So as part of your legacy, Rick, our middle and high school students have technology at their hands to prepare them for college and beyond. <laughs> I can't do all of this at once. <laughs> all right. Why can't I click ahead? There we go. Nice job. Okay. <clears throat> And we at the school, we've made meaningful advances in our commitment to live out our mission to learn, lead, and serve with leadership and action fully implemented in all three schools, symbolized by this permanent artwork in the elementary. Here we are. You see us? <laughs> you also, very importantly, facilitated our very first bond issuance, which helped finance key capital expenditures and secured our financial future. So, Rick. Thank you for the money <laughs> and for making it rain. <laughs> okay, we're not done. That I think is three. So you've led us through some amazing capital developments, not the least of which is a brand new elementary school, which if the video will play, you can see us coming out <laughs> of the slide. It's supposed to loop, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, we all, there's a stub toe, a little brush burn, and other things happening. Um, okay, and but that's just the beginning. Since then, we've done upgrades to the middle school office, the high school common area, and of course, <laughs> thanks to you, we got a brand new truck. <laughs> and finally, Although this one isn't as fun to talk about, while COVID certainly thwarted some of our strategic goals, we would be remiss not to acknowledge our thoughtful, unbiased leadership during this critical time. So, <laughs> so that was just a little fun, Rick, but we honestly mean it. Thank you for your leadership on these and so many other important issues. Thank you. Thank you. Keep our money. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. Uh, you dropped it off. Uh, just thank you. Um, it's. Uh, I was telling a couple of folks. It's. It's really surreal moment. Kind of walking in tonight, knowing this will be my the last board meeting that I'll be on. I'll call it this side of the table, right? Um, you know, if I look back on the last six years incredible accomplishments, things that'll outlive me, which uh, means a lot. And if I think back to the original intent, I can still remember I'm out at the beach with my family vacationing and I'm standing in line for a bagel and I see an email come across that said, hey, we're looking for board members, somebody with a finance background. I'm like, hmm, I think I can do that. 
And about then my wife texts me, she's like, Hey, did you see the email? <laughs> so we talked about it and, and ultimately I decided to apply and incredible journey, um, incredible accomplishments, um, just, uh, incredibly thankful growth personally, growth professionally. But I think, you know, if I set all those accomplishments aside, I think the thing that I'm most proud of is the folks that are sitting around this table because I had in some way, shape or form a hand in hiring every single one of you. And I think you guys are poised to take this to the next level. And while there are things that I, you know, leave a mark on, I think you guys have the ability to, to really jumpstart it and take it even further and no pressure, just, you know, build upon it, do a little better than, than what I was able to do. Um, but just huge thank you. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my family as well for the last six year of sacrificing your time with me um, so that I could help support this great organization, this great institution, all these awesome folks um, here in the room. And I made it through that without crying. So, All right. Do I have to take the necklace off or no, can no. I keep it? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, is there a motion out there? It's Jen, I will motion to end the meeting. This is Nicole, I second. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ladies. All those are, well, should we have any further discussion? <laughs> no? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. Motion carries.